electrons connected to the proton. The proton shoots out a photon. A photon bananarama lepton. That's how electronics works. Oh, hey. Welcome to the Electronics channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the superposition theorem. And superposition theorem is a electronic circuit analysis theorem that helps you evaluate and figure out what's going on in a circuit when there's multiple sources connected to it. Now this superposition theorem comes from the principle that in a linear system, when you have multiple different inputs creating different outputs, the sum of those different outputs from the inputs can, can, can combine together to give you the overall output. So basically what that means is if you have, if you have two inputs, A and B, and input A gives you some output X, and input B gives you some output Y. Now if you, and then if you sum together those two inputs, or you combine together those two inputs, the output that they give you is going to simply be the sum of X and Y. Now in electronic circuits, this, this it's great because, or electrical circuits, this is great because the voltage, and when you have it dealing with a circuit that has voltage sources and current sources, and, and, and resistors, you have a linear system. So this principle can apply. And so a little bit more specifically, what that means is in a, in a circuit, let's say you just have a random circuit, you've got a couple of sources, let's say you've got source one, and if you only have source one, it's going to give you a particular voltage, voltage one and current one in one of the elements in the circuit. And if you have only source two connected to the same circuit, it's going to give you a voltage two and a current two on, on those same two elements. But now if you have both, both of these sources, if you have both source one and source two in your circuit, then that's going to lead to the voltage across that element that you're looking at to be equal to the voltage caused by just source one plus the voltage caused by just source two and the current through that element will be the current through the element one due to source one plus the current through that element due to source number two. And the general idea when you have a circuit with multiple sources is you can analyze the circuit with only one source at a time. You can turn off that second source, the other source or sources. You can turn them off, analyze with just, just one source, figure out what's going on in the circuit in terms of voltages and currents through the different resistors in the circuit. And then once you've done that for each one of the individual sources, you can sum up the individual results of the voltages and currents and come up with the overall effect from, from all of the different sources. So probably the best way to figure out how the superposition principle works is to look at an example. And here we have an example with a voltage source and a 10 ohm output impedance and a 0.5 amp current source with a 100 ohm resistance in parallel. And then over here we have a 20 ohm load. This is our load. So what, we want to, what we're trying to do is figure out what is the voltage across the load and what is the current through the load. And the way that we use the superposition principle here is we can analyze the circuit with just the 10 volt source turned on and then analyze the circuit with just the 0.5 amp current source turned on, figure out what the voltage across the load is for each of those cases and the current, across, the current through the load for each of those cases, and then sum those two together. And that gives us the overall, the overall effect, the overall voltage and current um, associated with that 20 ohm resistor. So we're going to look at those two cases, voltage source on, current source off, current source on, voltage source off. So Vs on, Is off. When you're turning a current source off, you will set the source to an open. And so what that's going to look like, the new circuit that we're going to analyze will look like this. We'll have our 10 volt source. 10 ohm resistor coming out of it. The current source is now an open, so it's not even there anymore. 
it will still have the 100 ohm resistance there. And of course, we'll still have the 20 ohm load. And now what we want to figure out is the voltage across that 20 ohm load when VS is on and the current through that load again when VS is on. So this is now is a, is a fairly simple analysis. We have, well, what we can do is we can combine the 100 ohm and the 20 ohm resistor in parallel, and then I'll do a voltage divider between that, that 10 ohm resistor and whatever the combination of these two is. So the new simplified circuit simply looks like this, where this resistor here is the parallel combination of the 100 ohm resistor in parallel with the 20 ohm resistor. And that's equal to 16.67 ohms. And now the voltage across this equivalent resistance is the same as the voltage across the 20 ohm uh, load resistor. So now we can just use the voltage divider equation here. Don't forget this is the 10 ohms. So the voltage across the load, the voltage there is going to be equal to 16.67 divided by 10 plus 16.67. And that works out to 6.25 volts. So that's VL1. IL1, now this one's pretty easy to figure out because I know I've got 6.25 volts across the 20 ohm resistor. So it's simply 6.25 divided by 20, which gives me 0.3125 amps. Okay, so let's write those numbers down over here. VL1 is 6.25 volts and IL1 is 0 0.3125 3125 amps. And now we're going to do a similar analysis, but this time with the current source turned on and the voltage source turned off. And then, okay, so step two is with the current source on, voltage source off. To turn a voltage source off, what we do is we create a short. When, when the voltage source is set to zero, when it's dialed down to zero, it it's, uh, acts as a short in the circuit. So we will get, we'll have that 10 ohm resistor there, but now it's just a short straight to this common reference here. We have our current source and we have that 100 ohm in parallel with it. And then we have the 20 ohm load over here. Now, remember, this is, this is important. We have defined the load voltage to have that polarity. And we've defined the load current to have that direction. And this is important because what we'll see is when we look at the circuit with just the 0.5 amp current source, the polarity is going to actually be opposite of, of what we've defined, which just means that the calculations that we're doing are just for, will be negative numbers. Again, okay, so we've got 0.5 amp source and this 10 ohm, this 100 ohm and this 20 ohm are all in parallel with each other. So the equivalent circuit will look like that, where that equivalent resistance is 10 ohms in parallel with 100 ohms in parallel with 20 ohms. And that works out to 6.25 ohms. So these resist, this parallel combination is, includes the, the 20 ohm resistor. So whatever voltage we calculate across this parallel combination will be what's across that 20 ohm resistor. 
So VL, and here we got, remember our polarity is defined as this way, but our current source is going this way. So the voltage across the load from this calculation is going to be negative 0.5 amps times 6.25 ohms. And that works out to negative 3.125 volts. The current, we've defined current being this way, but this current is actually going this way in this part of the calculation. Um, so we've got negative 3.125 volts over 20 ohms to figure out that current. And that works out to 0 0.156 amps. So this is VL2 and IL2. So we can put those numbers over here now. So VL2 is negative 3.125 volts. IL2 is zero, negative 0 0.156 amps. I forgot the negative sign there. So we've, we've taken the circuit, we've, we've taken it in two cases that we then superimpose on top of each other. The one case with the 10 volt source on the 0.5 amp current source off, and then the 0.5 amp current source on, and the 10 volt source off. And we can superimpose those two values on top of each other and add them together. So the total voltage across the load is 6.25 volts from just the voltage source plus negative 3.125 volts that's coming from just the current source gives us an overall effect of 3.125 volts. For the current, we could actually take that 3.125 volts and divide by 20 ohms, but let's look at it considering the IL1 and the IL2. So IL1 is 3, 0.3125 amps plus a negative 0.156 amps. Add those two numbers together and we get 0.156 amps. So hopefully that introduction to the superposition theorem was easy enough to follow. The analysis itself is, is quite simple because you're only dealing with one source for each one of the, for each one of the analyses. Uh, the only thing that you really have to remember, the only, the only trick to the superposition principle is when you are eliminating the source, when you're turning sources off, you remember to short the voltage sources and open the current sources. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.